Frosty, Heidi, and Frank. 520 9710. 888 520 9710. Frosty, Heidi, and Frank. On free FM. 97.1, the FM talk station, live from LA. We're Frosty, Heidi, and Frank. Yes, we're here live once again. This time, Heidi's not here. Go on. <laughs> I'd be stuck in traffic. Oh, yeah, I'm sure she's listening right now. Traffic I know I is, would be. Traffic is terrible. And there's no reason for it to be terrible. See, I hate when uh, everyone deals with this about once every two or three weeks. You get on the road, your usual route, your usual time. And for some inexplicable, inexcusable, stupid reason, traffic isn't moving. There's no wreck. There's you no... never pass anything by the yeah. time you sit. It took me two and a half hours to get to work this morning. Two and a half hours? And I actually called you, and I called Heidi at 8 o'clock in the morning, two oh. hours before the shoe. I had my phone unplugged, sorry. To tell you, leave now, because it sucks. <laughs> it was that bad? I'm both, I didn't get an answer from either one of you. I don't think either one of you got my message. But uh, No, I didn't. I had my phone unplugged, sorry. Yeah, by the time we got around to your house, it was, it was better, the traffic problem, but Heidi calls, I'm stuck in traffic. Yeah, well, I know that. Well... And there's no... I'm not going to make it. So you saw no reason for it to be pretty no. much a gridlock from all the way from Eula, which is uh, near Egypt, all the way to here. Never passed anything. Isn't never that passed weird? an accident. Just... And I even avoided the uh, the freeway because I could see it wasn't moving from my... I looked out my balcony when I took the dog out to take his morning whiz. I thought, oh, crap, this gridlock. I'll, I'll use uh, Ventura Boulevard for a while or whatever. And so even that was gridlocked. Mm -hmm. And then I get off in Hollywood and those streets are gridlocked. So the entire... It's kind of like someone plopped down 20 million more cars this morning for some reason, and there's just not enough roads to use them. I, I tried to get off the freeway at one point. Mistake. Horrible. Yeah, because then everything else is backed up. So I kept getting in the back of the line, like kind of like when you're at the supermarket, oh, yeah. and every line's kind of clogged, and you think someone's going to be quick. You go, <laughs> yeah. and you move your cart, and you get over behind that person, and that person's paying in pennies. This is always worse than the other line. <laughs> and everywhere you move, your line stops moving. It sucks. There's, uh, well, I forget what street it is, Vine, whatever, whatever exit I take. I have two or three different options to get off the freeway and come through Hollywood to where we are. And but my main one, whatever street that is, I, I round the hill and I can look down and see for about half a mile because I'm at the top of the hill looking down. And one day last week, I looked and sure enough, two blocks ahead of me were gridlocked because there were orange construction cones. There was no one doing any work. There was no workers. There was no building going up. It's just for whatever reason, they decided to block off all but one lane that morning. And here it is, rush hour. And they're down to one lane. So I thought, hmm, okay, I'm going to go like a block to the left because it didn't look like anyone was going over there. So to get around two blocks, it took like an extra 30 minutes <laughs> because every other road, oh, that's a one-way street. Oh, there's more construction. Oh, it's blocked here. Oh, it's red light. Oh, there's a building. Oh, you got to go around the park. Oh, it's a golf course. No, it's an airport. Ah! <laughs> I should have just stayed where I was. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I did that exact thing. I got off uh, and made my way probably a mile in an hour. No. Oh, trying to meander uh, back and forth, trying to find a, a, a shortcut, the a sneaky way, <laughs> a way no one knows about. And I don't even know where I am. Oh, that's the worst part. I don't part. know the streets I'm on. Dead end. Oh, crap. No wonder nobody was on this street. It was a dead end. <laughs> they all, wait a minute. Don't you have that fancy speaking car GPS thing that tells Not in you that car. The car oh. I was in is like it's OnStar. You oh. call try call them for directions. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah, South Philippines? Carolina can't read a map. Well, at least it's South Carolina. It's not like Dell computers. <laughs> New Delhi. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's one of those messy days. Everyone, if if your employees are running late today, it's because of the weird, strange lateness in the roads for no reason. Frank, do you ever wonder um, when you're looking back at your life and you're in your deathbed? Are you going to add up the hours you spent behind the wheel not going anywhere and go, God, there's like another two years of my life? That's really going to piss me off if I actually ever did that because I was sitting there this morning. And normally I don't mind traffic at all. It's just part of my day. And I kind of black out while I drive. So 
<laughs> That's just part of my day where I can use it to just relax, rest, sit. Don't have to hear anything if I don't want to. But this morning, it was it was horrible. And I thought about how many hours I'm sitting on my ass in this car doing nothing. You know, there's two and a half here, and you got to go home this afternoon. Of course, it's another whatever that is. That's a long time to not really be accomplishing anything. So I have any kind of, emo- I mean, emotion, but frustration. Yeah, that's got to be a bad for your... cancer somewhere. You know, someday they'll find that stress is the main cause of cancer, right? think, and that's probably why they had less cancer in the pioneer days. All they had to worry about was, well, pretty much everything. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm currently in the unhappiest time of my life. Well... Uh, the anniversary of your divorce? No, does, it, just uh, in general. I guess oh. uh, I saw a study where it says uh, men in their late 30s and early 40s are the least content of everyone. Really? Yeah. So I'm I'm in the unhappiest part of my life right now, and now I have to sit in traffic for the next oh, two, well, two and a half hours. Unlucky you. It says uh, men are the least satisfied members of society between you know late 30s early 40s scoring well below teenagers the elderly and women of all ages <laughs> below the elderly below the elderly the ones who ache all the time and are dying they're happy this and that, they're happy apparently shuffleboard is very uh, satisfied i think i have a theory frank unless you have a theory I there i don't as have well. any theories i'm like i'm there and i'm like this sucks really well I'm shocked by the teenage thing, by the way. I would have guessed that would be the unhappiest. You said it's one of the happiest. Happiest is uh, when you're in college, your college years. There you go. That's the happiest. And your retirement. That's probably happy, unless there are health issues. I mean, I don't know. I, I would like to believe a lot of retired people aren't as happy as you think they are. He says it takes men until they reach the age of 65 to start enjoying life as much as they did in their late teens and early 20s. Wow. It's a long time to be unhappy to get back to where you were. Is it because we're working all the time? Yeah, it's Too it. many responsibilities? We just want to F off? Well. Because we're guys. Uh, late 30s to early 40s, my theorem is thusly. When you're in your teens, I see, I had a lot of issues when I was a teen. I, don't all teens worry about stuff that's stupid, like the test the next day and you can't get a date for the prom and you got zits? I mean, just stupid stuff you worry about. But there's a mountain load of stupid stuff you worry about. Later on, you look back and go, God, that was the best time of my life. Why did I drive myself crazy worrying about the zit? But anyway, you get to college yeah. and you stop worrying about the stupid stuff like that. You mature. College years, even if you don't go to college. You don't care about anything. Exactly. You're not expected to amount to anything yet. So there's no pressure. You can be, even if you don't go to college, you can be 20 through 25 or 26. What's the theme of the party going to be this week? Exactly. That's all. <laughs> you know, nobody is going to look down on you because you haven't achieved yet, because you're not expected to achieve yet. But when you get to those late 30s to early 40s, you know, around 40 years old, give or take, suddenly, my theory is, there's a barometer of comparison of people like you and your age that have done very, very well. And you know that you're being compared to that, and you compare yourself to it. Maybe people you knew that amounted to something. You see people in the in the public eye, the successful actors, actresses, directors, uh, sports people, everyone in their 30s that's doing well. And you go, ah, gee, I'm John Elway's age. How come uh, I never amount to something? And <laughs> that's when it's sort of the smack, smack, smack wake-up call, I think, that, okay, you're not a kid anymore. You're supposed to amount to something. And if you really haven't achieved a lot of your goals yet and you close in on 40 and you see other people your age have, I think it's a big uh, sobering wake-up call that makes you very sad. Is that why you're unhappy? Absolutely. Really? <laughs> no, actually, I'm the opposite That was a pretty thought-out response. Like, you've been thinking about this. Uh, that's, I'm, I'm joking when I say I'm unhappy. I re- believe not. Believe it or not, I'm actually... God, I'm saying I'm going to say... You seem happy, but I think you're only happy because Heidi's not here. <laughs> you have this special grin on your face. Yeah, no, no. A glow about you. I'm, I'm pacified. I think I'm past the age of being unhappy because I'm never going to do things I always wanted to do. There also comes a point where you realize folly was folly and pipe dreams were pipe dreams. I'm never going to be a rock star. So I don't worry about it anymore. Oh, so you've already realized that, yeah. and now you're over that. Yeah, there's I'm at the age pacification. of saying, I'm realizing that, that I can't <laughs> change my path at this moment. Where I am, I'm stuck till I retire. Yeah, sucks. And then I'm, when I retire, that's when I'm happy again, because I don't have to do what I did my whole life that I didn't really like. You know um, what I'm saying? Ye, ye, no. And I'm, I'm losing my youth. Well, there's that. Oh, yeah, welcome to that. I'm, half, I'm halfway to death. What do you think I am? If you're halfway. Hey, you're leading that race to death, see? So at least you're winning something. Yeah, on that death metronome, you're, <laughs> you're straight up and I'm at 2 o'clock. Uh, yeah, the, the, you lose your youth and you can see it in the mirror, too. That's the other, I guess, part of my theory, too. I have a class reunion coming up in just a couple months, and I love those people. I only get to see them every five years. You know, the people I've known since I was five years old myself. 
But when I see them and they see me, it's this mutual unspoken thing of, oh, God, we're really falling apart now. I mean, you can't But you fight. bust your ass trying to lose some weight just to go back to that um, thing every yeah, day. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying because I, I don't want to look like this. But you want to make them look bad? Because you said they don't even try. They're, no. just, they're just fat blobs of crap. And to their credit, they don't worry about such things. So why do you? I, I shouldn't. I should be like them, but I'm in Los Angeles. They don't even dress up or iron their shirts. Good for them. They live in a place that is not nearly as materialistic or as image conscious as freaky, shallow, glitter box Los Angeles, California. That's one thing that bugs me about this place, is there is an expectation of appearance here. And you look down on it if you don't at least try. Believe it or not, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, but see, that doesn't make any sense, because yeah, if people here expect you to at least try, people there don't, then why do you try for people who don't expect it? Well, I don't know. I just... I... I just look really bad compared to the last time they saw me. Like, <laughs> I've gained a lot of weight in the last five years. I really have not aged well in the last five. And you five. really eat up the, my God, Frosty, you haven't changed a bit. Look how good you people look. Said my that. Lord, look yeah. at you. People said that last time, five years ago. Now I'm like, one of these people are going to go, oh my God, what happened to him, downward spiral? <laughs> I at least want to get back closer to where I was. Well, you I, hit the wall. Yeah, I just, <laughs> this is terrible, but I'm thinking I might not even go if I can't drop about 30 pounds. I just don't. <laughs> so you wouldn't go if you couldn't lose the weight? It's sort of a motivational thing for me, but and I'm not doing well with that. I, I mean, but I you're go. happy. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm happy because, uh, well, like I said, I've accepted that some things, you know, the thing is. Like your record's never getting done. That's one thing. You'll never be a, a director of a film. No, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't write that one off yet. Okay. That may be my next career. Uh, but isn't it too late to have a next career at your age? It's getting there, isn't it? Who's going to hire me Isn't now? that why we're unhappy? Because what we wanted to do as a kid, then we had to take a job because we got responsibilities, whether it be we knocked some chick up early in our life and we, and we had to do the family thing and and didn't get to pursue our dream. And now it's too late to ever pursue our dream and realize that about 40. And then we're stuck in this well, job that we never wanted in the first place. And well, the only way I'm going to be happy again is when I'm 65 and I get to quit this gig and then, then I'm close to death. But then you're too old to do anything else. And what you said at the beginning of that, your premise is wrong from the first five words. I'm just happy I'm close to death. Well, at 65, that's why I think people are happy they're close to death mm, as a man. Yeah, but people are living to like 80s now. I mean, 65 now isn't what it used to be in your grandpa's age. Now, come on, you're expected to live like 77, I'm 78 not live if you're man. Uh, you aren't? No. Anyway, I'm doing what I wanted to do as a kid, Frank. You mentioned that earlier. As a kid, I was running around with a microphone acting like I was on the radio. I mean, this is the thing is, I'm. God, getting, you must have been annoying. I'm kidding. <laughs> I was. I was so. Really? How many people like just slapped you when you when came around? I would organize the neighborhood into little plays and <laughs> put on little performances in the garage for the neighborhood. Anyway, I always wanted to do this as a kid, and now I'm doing it, so that gives me very, very satisfied feelings deep down. However, I always thought it'd be more fun and satisfying. Well, well we're lucky in that sense. I think, yeah, we're both doing jobs that we completely enjoy. But a lot, the most men out there, I think are not doing what they set out to do. Yeah, and if you're closing in on 40 years old or it's past you a couple years ago, that's when you realize, God, a lot of those dreams I had, maybe most of them, I'm never really going to ever be able to do. And that is very sobering. It does make you sad. Eventually, you will get over that. So give me a happy rating, 1 to 10. Where are you? All told, I'm probably... 10's happy. I'm probably... As hell. Can you use fractions? Yeah. Because sometimes... Two decimals. Okay. Eight point... Five. Wow, you're happy, man. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I mean, there's another 1.5 I'd like to be, but but I, I but if I don't get there, that's fine. I could be at 8.5. I could be like. It's a, hard to believe, but I'm glad you feel that yeah. way. Yeah, I could be happy with a B plus the rest of my life. That's what I'm saying. What I, are you? I probably say eight. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm happier. It's hard to believe you're. Yeah, you're happier than me. <laughs> that makes me sad. You have more worries than I do. I do. You I have other responsibilities. Kid. College paid for in the future. I got nipples popping. Oh, yeah. You forgot about that. Yeah, you get the worries. You do, kid. too, but, you know, those are yours. Yeah, they're mine. You know. That's fine. I got this nice you, set You all. know where your boobs are all the time. <laughs> I don't know where her boobs are going to be. See, I'm happy. Every time I want a nice pair of boobs, all you do is look down. There they are. <laughs> Yeah, you have a, you have a bigger mortgage, yeah, nice, yeah. nicer house, and I'm envious. But with that comes a bigger mortgage, so you have more financial outlay. You much drive uh, you drive a much nicer car than I do. Yeah, I do. So that's more expensive. So money issues are what you have. I don't think I have. You also have the responsibility issues of a of a family, which I don't have. God, man, I wish I was you. I know. See, in, in a weird sort of way, I'm kind of like, hey, if only I were 22 again with all this. Uh... But you could be. Now oh, that you have God. the money, you could act like you're 22, and no one's going to laugh at you. 
You know, they would, Frank. I'd be the old guy. No, you're not the guy the... sitting at the college bar who was there, you know, eight years in a row. No. You're the guy who's made it. Now you can go back and be the 22 because you got money to do it. Yeah. I'm just, do it! I'm just tired. I don't have <laughs> the energy. See, that's the health <laughs> issue comes in now, and I don't have the energy to do it. I see, that's what I don't have. You don't have the energy, and I do. Yeah. See, best of both of us would be one good guy. Right, there you go. Combined, we're 16.5. On the happy scale. <laughs> no, it says the average here, both uh, both sexes. 7.3. Well, that seems hot. Frank, it should be, the average should be a 5. Aren't some people going to say they're 0 and 1 and 2? And I'm, some going to say, like us, 8, 9, 10. If everyone says 7 to 9, that's like when you watch the Olympics and you're watching ice sk- you're watching whatever you're watching. And and the judges hold up the sign. And what do you give them? 9.1, the next one 9.2, the next one 9, the next one 9.3. What happened to 1 through 9? No one uses all those other numbers. They're all bunched up between 9 and 9.3. Yeah, I've never seen anybody get a 1. I know. For falling on their ass on the ice. So let's just cross off 1 through 8. So in your silly survey there, Frank, no one probably said 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. If, if the average is 7 point whatever it is, it seems like people went a little high. And I don't know when they ask people. I don't know if they ask teenagers or if they ask just people. Uh, it doesn't say the, the age range of the people they ask. Well, you said teenagers uh, did well in the survey, so they must have asked some. No, it says that uh, ranked, yeah, I guess less, less than teenagers. Maybe they ask know. people looking back in your life. That would be a way to do it. You shouldn't ask teenagers if they're happy. Because they're teenagers. I mean, and, and their their world is so different from the adult world. You should ask adults, looking back, are you happier now than you were in your teens and your 20s? I'm guessing most of you would say no. <laughs> and that's very, very sad. But welcome to reality. Oh, the happy times. Uh, happy talk. Uh, wait till I'm 65 to get them back. You know, my parents are both retired. I, aren't yours retired? Yeah, both of them. Are they miserable now? I, I think they're bored. That's my parents. They're bored silly. My mom said she's busier now doing nothing than she was when she was working full time doing everything. So to get a job, but she's too old now. No, she's not. There's a, I got this. A million people out there, seventy five and older, are still working. Well, let's say they have to. It's because they don't have any retirement money. The oldest worker in the U.S. That guy that just died. He was one hundred and three, wasn't he? One hundred and four. The, the bus guy. Yeah. Who, no, he's a. Wouldn't he work for the bus? The bus cleaner. He's or a something. bus cleaner. The, the black guy. We we want to. Remember, we wanted to have him come in and do the show like on a Tuesday, but he died like the day before. He was dead Sunday night or something. I do remember him that. here locally. He wasn't the oldest. There's a hundred four year old bookkeeper. <laughs> oh, actually, he's not a bookkeeper. He's a beekeeper. <laughs> actually, he's, like, he's an accountant friend. for the bees. <laughs> he's a bookkeeper for the beekeepers. Shouldn't you be able to run a little faster uh, than you can at 104 if the bees are chasing you? Yeah, well, if you get all like, the old shakes, <laughs> it's stung to death. Couldn't one bee finish you off at that age? Here's a guy, uh, 92, his name's Pete Perillo, and he still has a workday routine. He gets up, he says a prayer, and heads off in uniform to guard the city courthouse. He's the security guard at 92. Oh, you know what that means. Intimidating. Oh, look at him. He's just standing there, this shell of a man. Not going to go crazy in that courthouse. Because <laughs> Pete's there, protecting us all. Belts actually, up around the boobs. Actually, even uh, even bad guys have co- a code of honor. You're not going to punch out a 92-year-old man, are you? Ex- well, except for those few who do. The latest. Those old ladies getting punched. Yeah, that's what I meant, except for them. So maybe if you want your bank g- a vault guarded or this building here, just have some geriatric guy, some sweet old gentleman standing there, some grandmotherly lady. You're not going to tackle her. So you might be working at 75 or 90. No, I refuse. I refuse. Social Security take care of me, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That'll still be around. Our number is 888 Heidi's not dead. She's on her way. Uh, and we're very sad that she's not here. But she will be here soon, and our happiness will go off the scale. Frosty, Heidi, and Frank. Well, that doesn't make us happy hearing Loverboy. <laughs> Frosty, Heidi, and Frank. Heidi stuck in L.A.'s horrendous traffic this morning. She'll be here momentarily. Triple eight five two zero ninety seven one zero is our number. Hello, Carlos. Hey guys, how is it going? What What's up? up? I, I just want to compliment the show. It sounds good without the cackling chicken there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Frankie. Yeah. 
And the good spirit of Christmas, can you play the uh, Jingle Bell fart song for the new listeners? Isn't it a little early for that? What's the date? It is August something, Carlos. Yes, it is. August 20th. The spirit of Christmas. <laughs> spirit of Christmas. I'll have, yeah. I have to find that. I don't know where my jingle farts Thanks, are. Car- you know what I saw in uh, the Tiger Store? It shall remain nameless, but starts with T and ends with Argot. What'd you find? The Christmas stuff going up already. Really? Then the back aisle where they used to have the uh, grills and summer stuff. They were clearing all that out. I was there yesterday. We haven't had Labor Day. I know! They used to at least wait till Thanksgiving. No, then it was Halloween. No, now as soon as they clear the, the, the summer stuff out and they got those bare aisles in the back corner, they're putting the Christmas stuff up there already. It's like back to school summertime and we got Christmas stuff going up. Why don't we just leave it up? Yeah, just have an aisle all year round. Christmas yes. aisle. Well, the problem is, for those of you who do celebrate Christmas, it's kind of fun when it's starting to get a little bit cold and it's it's in the fall, early winter, and you start thinking, oh, what am I going to buy for the people in your life? And you know, you see the trees and the sparkly lights and the Santa Claus stuff. When you get in the spirit, and you know, two, three, four weeks before the big day, you start shopping. What joy do you get in doing Christmas shopping at the end of August? What thrill do you get when you put it in your basket in hot? It's outside. It's 102 degrees, and you're Christmas shopping, and you don't have the same. Well, I you put it in the closet. When you, it's, when? That, it's the holiday that the worst holiday, I think. It's the most wonderful, beautiful holiday, Frank. Why would you? Ha- because there's so Grinch? much stress. Well, there is that. I know. You're going here, you got to go there. You got to see them. Got to do that. Got to get this gift. Don't forget that gift. Got to buy this. It's just crap. Yeah, I know. There's that. If it weren't for the family thing. <laughs> if it weren't for the family thing, it'd be I know. Good. <laughs> I know family usually is what you want to see around the holidays for feelings of warmth, but all the plans and the and the the politics that goes on and well we saw your family last it's year we're going to see mine this year for a holiday yeah it is anyway triple eight five two oh ninety seven one oh hello david hey how are you guys doing today i i always enjoy your show i uh i was just thinking about the, the christmas thing myself and you know the people that are shopping in in august are just trying to miss that huge crowd of people who are bumping into them and grabbing the same thing they are because let's face it most of us shop four days before christmas yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true david but how stupid would you feel if you were pushing your shopping cart up to the checkout line and i looked in and you had like christmas bows and christmas paper and it's like august 20th <laughs> You look home. like a total homo. I'm, I'm, I'm home, I have my Christmas in August, and then I'm, you know, I'm drinking Tahiti uh, margaritas somewhere on the other side of the globe, right? Uh, during Christmas, because it is, you know, people don't even want to sometimes really see their family. It's that one time a year or two times a year that they have a to. Christmas, the uh, Christmas thing that you can only do during Christmas, and you would never pull it out in July. Uh-huh. Eggnog. <laughs> <That's>, that, <you laughs> a glass of uh, eggnog in July. Yeah, a nice hot glass. I called as I was listening earlier, and uh, we were talking about happy, you know, and the word, uh, you know, it gets used a lot. And then, you know, I, I have this thing because I have my own personal definition of what happy is. And my question is to you guys is what is the definition of happy to you guys? Because I see the lack of worries and problems that are always on the front of the front burners of your mind. How's okay. that? Well, yeah, yeah because well, yeah, I think it's good because my mine is just like a, in the physics where you know hot and cold. There's a there's a, a physics property about that, and that is that happiness is the absence of sad. So if you're not sad, you're happy by default. You don't have to be laughing. You don't have to be ecstatic, but you are happy. And and the other part was that, you know, I'm 45, and I've been off for the last four years enjoying my retirement, kind of like the mid-retirement. And I worked 20 years, and so now I'm taking four off. Where, I'm guessing the uh, taking four off was involuntary, the downsizing going on in the company. <laughs> I, I just realized that I kind of achieved where I was going with well, that. Hold on. Did you really retire or were you laid off or fired? No, 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 no. I, I, <laughs> I, I achieved where I was going to go in that company. And so I left and then I was enjoying myself. And so I just, hey, enjoyed some of the retirement money that I've no. packed. Okay. This, this is uh, based on his conversation. Hang on. He's yeah, making yeah, me unhappy. Yeah, I know. Is that uh, happiness is the d- denial of life. Again, that's too deep. I need two of those. That's deep, man. Happy what? Happiness. Where it's like, yeah, if you're happy all the time, then you're in denial of the life that you're in. Oh, Because it's impossible okay. to be that happy. I've known people like that that were always smiling, and it was very disturbing. It's like they were brainwashed. They were like, they were like North Koreans or something. 
they were they were always way too happy, cheerful. And I thought, well, these are very disturbed human beings. I'm very, very sad now myself. I've had a wave of woe wash over me in the last 15 seconds because. Heidi's here. Oh my God! <laughs> Did you like that? Oh man! Oh my God! I was laughing so hard <laughs> in the car, and I thought, Oh my God! How long is he going to hold this note? That was funny. Oh, I've never been happier to see the two of you. How's you finally funny? made it. I made it. Um, I did something I, that I think may be illegal. You made your car fly. But I couldn't take. It's amazing, but I couldn't take it anymore. So um, you can tell me. Or if a police officer is listening, you tell me whether or not it's illegal. Oh, let me guess. You got tired of the traffic wasn't moving. You just left your car and ran here the rest of the way. Yeah, your I did. car is sitting and in the middle tough. of the freeway. I did about six miles in flip-flops. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but I was listening to the two of you, and then I called Jack just to say, I'm gonna not even going to be there anywhere close to 10. He calls me back about mm, 18 minutes into your show, and uh, I said, I'm so sorry. He goes, hey. Take your time. <laughs> and I was like, that's the last thing you want. You want, the, you want the boss to be like, where are you? Where are you? How long? How, you know, TBA, TBA or whatever. Uh, yeah. Technically, shouldn't Frank and I get to divvy up a prorated 18 minutes of Heidi pay? Yes, I did tell him to just go ahead. Is and... it really worth it? <laughs> no, not really. I mean. You might have a coffee yeah, between the two of you. Time the taxes and her agent done with it. There's nothing left. But we'll, still. we'll split a bag of Funyuns from the vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> the small bag. Oh. So what did you do that was illegal, you think? Okay. I, I can't believe I'm admitting it, but I don't care. Any, I'm in that mood where I'm like, I, it's embarrassing to admit because it's disgusting. And I think if I, if anybody think that, thought that I had any sex appeal at all, this story will probably completely obliterate any, you know, sexual what feelings. What did you do? Well, I was on the road for quite a while, uh, over two hours. And so, and I drink a lot of water and I run, oh, I run no. this morning and I drink a lot of water and, I had I had taken in dry cleaning over the weekend, so I still had a big white plastic laundry basket in the back of my truck that I that I will that I take the dirty clothes and I take it in, and I still had it in the back of the truck. I hadn't taken it out yet, and I'm in traffic. If you were in Indiana, that'd be called a child seat. <laughs> That's the kid carry. Throw a pill in. It'll be fine. She just explained laundry basket. <laughs> to us. I'm out of it. Trust me. Bear with me. Is this the same load of dry cleaning you forgot about a week ago that was riding around in your car? for? Yes, but I had geez. taken that in. So the, oh. the, the dry cleaning is being, you know, done, but I still had the basket. <laughs> and boy, did I have to pee. And I thought, okay, <laughs> well... I hate going into an establishment because I wasn't going to stop at a Starbucks and get a coffee. I didn't have that kind of time to be waiting in line to then to go use the bathroom. And I didn't want to pull into a parking lot and then there's parking. I just wanted to get to work. So I thought, what? And I had to go. It was one of those where there's no way I can hold it. I'm miserable. And I don't want to go outside the truck because it's crowded. It's a busy morning. So I pulled off to one of these little side streets. Couldn't tell you what it's called. And I've tinted windows. So I put all my windows up and I was driving the Escalade truck today so the seats are down for the dogs at this point it looks like she's ready to make a drug deal it does but i don't care i'm so desperate i'm thinking i think this is illegal but i can't take anymore so i pull my jeans down just just enough i don't want to get them too and far down inside so your car i'm inside my car i've climbed over the driver's seat into the back, <laughs> in the back and i had a dog bowl like one of those uh, collapsible dog bowls that i take when i go hiking for their mm. water so i thought but it's kind of tiny, and I thought, I don't know how good my... <laughs> and then I saw the, oh, the big white plastic laundry basket. My laundry basket has, like, wicker holes yeah, in the side. Yeah, mine has holes in it, too. Okay, mine does, too. That's where the tricky part came in. But they're they're not... The bottom's solid, okay? But then the holes start sort of maybe an inch up. So I think if I can oh. just do this... Then it'll just cover the bottom, and I'll be fine. But how are you going to move it? Yeah, it's going to slosh around. How are you going to... Okay, at this point, I was just thinking I needed to relieve my kidneys. I didn't, I didn't uh. really care about what am I going to do with the laundry basket once said basket is full of me. You didn't have any empty beer or wine bottles rolling around <laughs> your floorboard you could have used? No. You know well, the that... ones you see when you hit the brake? <laughs> 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 if only I had been driving in your car. <laughs> so, uh, sure enough, I get my jeans down just enough so that if in case somebody walks by... I can get them up fast, you know, and just pretend, oh, I was just, oh, napping. oh <laughs> traffic was bad. Oh, but then I start to go, and it's just, oh, sweet, sweet relief. But then I'd had a lot of water, so I'm going, now, the stuff's climbing. And I'm going, I can't, I can't get up to the hole, you know, the, the hole in the basket. So you're, you're on your hands and knees above oh, the laundry frosty. basket. Well, uh, yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, I take my front feet are on this, I'm, 
their hands and knees. No, no, I'm, well, I'm trying to picture. <laughs> I'm sorry. laundry basket is tall, <laughs> and let me show you anatomy. Well, I'm trying to figure in the back of a truck with a tall right laundry basket. How do you? Okay, she's she's squatting. You had room to do that in the back of your truck. Uh, okay, the seats were down. Squatting. Uh, oh, oh my god. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I fill that up. That now I had to go. I have to get rid of this because I can't. I can't <laughs> drive the truck with it. It's going to slosh. You can't throw it out. That's, so really, uh, you were late not because of traffic, because you stopped and you had to pee in a laundry basket, no. and you couldn't figure out how to empty it. Did you and wash that took your you about hands? Thirty minutes. <laughs> yeah, no, what do you do with it? No, so what I did is I had a water bottle in my car, and so I just opened the door of the back the back of the truck door, and I just sort of pretended like. I was pouring, I, I kind of sloshed it and then just poured my water bottle out. So if anyone was seeing it, just looked like I was getting rid oh, I don't need this water anymore. <laughs> and I threw the basket in the back of the truck and I took off. Did you rinse it? Why am I, why it's I in rinse? the hot sun with the windows up, I'm guessing. Yeah, on the roof here. At the, oh. On the roof for the next five no, hours. No, I cracked the windows. What, am I some sort of sicko? Oh, uh, let me guess. You don't care because it's a lease. That is true. How do you care. have no class? You know what, Frank? I, I couldn't help it anymore, and I think, and I thought, well, it's better than having to do that outside and getting busted. So I just did it in the car with but the windows like a, up. But a I don't know. bush or something you could have run behind. Well, no, but then somebody might see me this way. It's like they, my windows are up. I'm tinted. I'm no, illegal. It's still against the law. Even if I'm in my truck. Yeah, I can't be sitting in my truck masturbating. Oh. He's right on that, but uh, but technically, <laughs> uh, I didn't make it. No. Technically, no one can see you because the windows are tinted. So yeah, you could be nude in the back or doing what you were doing. Right. But if no one can see you, I don't see but why I'm that be against the. Yeah, but what if you're in a lead box then in public? You'd be naked in the box and breaking the law. I mean, if you can't be seen. If I'm when, where? When is that scenario ever yeah. coming up? You know, so I was in this the, lead box. Where right? am I again? Off of Highland, there's a big lead box there that people get in <laughs> naked sometimes. Is there a hatch on it? Or something? Like, How do yeah, I get out? It's, it's like they found it on an island after a plane crashed. It's a big hatch. <laughs> there's some machinery down there. And every seventy seconds, you have to hit a button hit, of some sort. You're right. And anyway. then your you your your clothes will appear. <laughs> Hi. Oh, my God. Back to finishing Cooth school, you go. You are such a lady. Aren't I? My old Indiana Roots showing through. I'm like, yeah, just give me that laundry basket. I don't care. If only you still had the dry cleaning in there, you could have <laughs> used it to, like, <laughs> sop been... up the... <laughs> are... are you guys going to be able to get that out? There are a few stains. Oh, I don't know what they are. Uh-uh. <laughs> well, I'm going to get you some Febreze for your birthday to spray the it. inside of your car now. <laughs> Heidi's back. We're all here. We're Yay. all happy. We're on a 12 on the happiness scale now. Yippity skippy. <laughs> <laughs> Frosty, Heidi, and Frank. <laughs> this is what you aren't. You are not one of these. <laughs> you are so un... <laughs> Heidi's here. Yay. You are not a... Ladies. Based on what when you did on the way to work today alongside the road, Miss Full Bladder. I pulled off into a yeah. quaint little quiet neighborhood and peed in the laundry basket. So, inside your car. Well, yeah, the windows were up. I've got the uh, not only the illegal tent, but also I did an illegal act. Sorry. You have the illegal tent too. Well, I don't think you're supposed to have the window tent in, Cal in the state of California, are you? Yeah, you, you have can. it. You just can't have it. Uh, have so black you can't see in completely. Oh, you can. That's see Heidi, and you're, I've tried to look. Well, in your it car. is dark though. Why it's do you not, do it, this? Because it keeps the sun. It keep, you know, When you've got a car that sits in the sun, it but keeps the target. you can't tint the front window. Well, I'm not, I didn't tint the windshield, but I was... That's no what one I'm saying. The sun still gets in. Mm. Mm. But your target to be pulled over. Aren't you I ever know. worried coming back from happy hour? That's uh, your question, Heidi. You're like, <laughs> is it illegal to pee inside your car? Right. If, yeah. Did you, did you break the law this morning? Right. I said, yes, you did. Frost? Technically... She did, but I think we've all done this, and it doesn't seem like you should be charged with that if you've gone out of your way to not be seen. It's the difference between somebody who wants to flash little kids from the inside of their car sitting mm -hmm. outside the playground and someone who pulls off the road in the middle of nowhere in a tinted car and straddles so they can't be seen. I, well, I if, you're, if you're seen, that, I mean, if you're busted, that means you were seen. Yeah, but someone snuck up on you to see you. They went out of their way to look in. But there's windows cop. on your bathroom. Mm. This is true. If it's a porta potty... It, there's no windows. It's right. A, there's privacy. There's a door lock. I mean, I hid the best I could, and like I said, I shimmied my jeans down so that they were. I was covered as much as I could, and I'm I'm backed into the back of the truck where nobody could see my you know where my moon shining. 
So I did a pretty good job. At fr- so your knees to- are together while you're doing it? Well, I did. Yeah, I did it as ladylike as I possibly could. <laughs> and, I, and then I did have that thing going through my head. Of, if some old lady's going, well, what's going on out there? Going out to get her paper this morning and I get busted. And all of a sudden, I'm picturing myself on a sex, sex offender You'd list. You'd be a registered yeah, sex offender great. for life. That'd be good for the show. Why not? That neighborhood you live in would have one of those red glowing triangles on the website. <laughs> sex offender lives here. People knocking on your door daily. So what's with the sex offender thing? What'd yeah. you do? I got kids. They're trying to get me out. I'm like, no, no, I'm not interested in your son or your daughter. I just had to pee. You realize just keep your laundry basket away from me. <laughs> Those I can't resist. You realize Frank and I, most of the audience would not believe your lame ass story of how you became a sex offender either. I yeah. know. Laundry basket? Yeah, right. It's absolutely true. What though. did you really do? I was desperate. Uh-huh. I had to do the same thing. For a man, it's much easier, obviously. See, you guys are lucky. When I took Rudy to the ocean, what, a couple weeks ago? Remember, I was I was bragging off the air. I didn't tell us on the air yet about how I actually got a little bit of exercise. I took Rudy to the ocean, Rudy Dog. Mm-hmm. And I drove up north of, uh, what's that place you can take dogs on the beach? Not Leo Zuma. Carrillo? Yes, that mm-hmm. place, yes. Way up north of uh, Malibu. So I took him up there. But it was uh, like the middle of a Sunday afternoon, and I looked down as I drove by, and there was nowhere to park down there. You had to park alongside PCH, which is very dangerous getting out of your car. I hate that. So I'm parked there, and I looked down, and got gosh, it was a long drive here, and I had, like Heidi, a big massive thing of Mountain Dew on the way here. So I had to go. So along PCH, I crouched down, crawled in the back of my car, and I'm crouched down there behind. There's no way I could be seen, mm-hmm. though there are people walking by now and then. I waited till there was no one walking by, and I'm down there on the floorboard, did my thing, didn't take long, twisted the cap. Always save your cap, by the way. Never throw the cap out the window. You still sat down to pee? Well, I mean, crouched down. I was... No, I don't understand. Crouching peer. I understand there's people parked, you know... <laughs> Hidden penis. <laughs> All along the PCH, you could have gone between two cars, no, two SUVs. No, then you're out in the middle of everywhere. Then you're out in public. My thinking is if you're inside the confines of your automobile, yeah. you at least have an argument. Tinted windows are one thing, but you're still in your car, so you didn't want anyone to see you. If I had gone outside my car and exposed myself, people go, ah, you wanted to expose yourself, and how do I answer that? Stay in your car and do it. At least you have an argument in court there. At least, though, where you were frosty and along PCH, you know, you'd see a lot of surfers and they're stripping off their wetsuits. And there are people that get down to, you know. Zero it, to yeah, naked. To, yeah. So in that situation, that looks a little, you'd be in a little better shape than me at, at some side street in Studio City going, oh. Frosty God. looks like a surfer, doesn't he? Oh, he's just putting on his wetsuit. <laughs> Aren't you proud I didn't just go in the ocean? I could have. Didn't you get in the ocean? Yeah, I did. I got in. You did? I can't Didn't picture. know it was all wet and yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> wet and salty. Mm, my favorite. It's so pretty in the painting. Just step in it. It's, it's, it's <laughs> waves and shell hurt things. and. Hey, Mommy, an elephant seal. <laughs> creepy, strange, floating, moss-like masses. <laughs> People are taking pictures of you. People from Nebraska. Is it dead or sleeping? <laughs> the first wave hit me and Rudy both. And with it came about two metric tons of kelp. <laughs> and the waves receded, and people were actually pointing and laughing because we're both just covered with seaweed. <laughs> Great. <laughs> anyway, triple eight five two zero ninety seven one zero. Why don't automobiles come with a little section in the back? If it's an SUV, you, you maybe couldn't do this in a passenger car, but an SUV where you pull the screens up in the back, like a little portable mm-hmm. stall to do, you know, for emergency purposes, whatever business you have to do. A privacy screen Didn't goes up. Didn't Pontiac Aztec have that, or was that a tent? <laughs> that was a tent. Oh. It's a camping <laughs> tent. <laughs> was that a port I can't remember. I think they make the, the, the attachment hooks onto your bumper. That is a toilet seat. <laughs> Jesus. I need that. <laughs> With a little bucket on it and everything. Really? Yeah. You're still out in public, though. Who came up with that? Saturn. (laughs) That's all that barbecue. (laughs) (sighs) Don't forget, Tom Likas will take over in a little bit when our show has run its course. We are Frosty, Heidi, and Frank.